Um, we have guests here from England, from Bradford, England. So how was Bradford in the summer? Good. Bradford, England is the home of Sheikh Ibrahim OCF is uh, here. Just tie it, tighten it up, tighten it up with the, I don't know if you have these things in, in Bradford, but just tighten the, yeah, just tighten it so it doesn't f- fall on you. Bradford, England, first of all, is, um, has a gorgeous park and it's generally as a, as a city prettier than Birmingham. Doesn't have as many shiuch and masajid, but it's prettier city if, if we're going to compare. The both of them have very densely populated Muslim societies. Branf- Branford, Bradford had a um, um, a college there that went out of business, and Sheikh Ibrahim Osiyaf's organization. Although Sheikh Ibrahim lives in Liverpool, yeah. but his organization put the bid out and won the bid, and they now are the. Um, so that was the old business school. It was old business yeah, school. So yeah. The Bradford University, I went there, so that was still open. I think you said in one of the pods that they yeah. they, they bought the university. They didn't buy the university. The university is still standing. Oh, the university, oh, yeah, only the so, business school. So it's just the business school. That okay, only the business yeah. school is what they own. Yeah, that campus. It's a massive About campus. 14 and a half acres or something. 40? 14 and a half. 14 and a half acres, like a that. lot of buildings. A lot of grass. And it's something that is, um, um, the architecture is really old. Yeah. So it's a beautiful building now. Gothic. And they prayed Jummah with them there. Yeah. So. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Uh, old Gothic style buildings. So there's a lot of activity you could do there because the population is um, very densely populated with Muslims. Like when I went to the campus center, it was pretty quiet because it was summertime, right? But everyone at the desk, the security, the, everyone was a Muslim. Like England, here, here is there's a new type of country that I would say, it's a which is a not a Muslim country, but it's now Islamically friendly. This is not a legal category, but it's a experiential category, just like Muslim friendly countries. Mm. And I could tell you that England has really it's there already. And here, here is the litmus test: if you can literally pray anywhere without being looked at or harassed. I was at next to Big Ben and we needed to pray. There's a park next to Big Ben. We just put out some, you know, clothes that we had and we just prayed on it. No one bats an eye. People walk by. They don't even bat an eye, right? Um, Scotland Yard, down by, I think it's, you know, by the, by the water somewhere. Scotland Yard headquarters has a lawn next to it. But myself, I just prayed. No one bats an eye. Uh, halal food Never have to look There's no such thing as Where's their years Halal restaurant If There's always halal food everywhere So I would say that That's where You 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 get the feeling that It's not a Muslim country But it's a very Muslim friendly country And I think the United States Eventually is going to Get to that Not by population Not by population But Enough people Will come to respect Muslims That will have a place here And how does How does a people Have a place in a country is when enough people in that country, their hearts accept you, right? And enough people, number one, they're accepting Islam, and number two, they're accepting of Muslims. That's that's becoming something that we see. Mm-hmm. And in England, it's not even that people have a choice anymore to accept Muslims, because the numbers are so high to the point, not that you don't have a choice like you're being a jerk and not giving them a choice. No, like you don't have a choice to accept people when their population's that high. You just have to get accustomed to it. Right, and also uh, discrimination. It's possible to do when you really don't deal with a lot of a certain group of people. Mm-hmm. Right, discrimination. You want me to move this again? But when you deal with so many different types of those people, the discrimination in your mind becomes silly. Mm-hmm. Right. So, if someone, if I deal with, let's say Hindus, let's say, and deal with a lot of Hindus, hypothetically. It's just silly for someone to say, oh, Hindus are like this. Well, there's so many different ones. And I've seen that mm-hmm. they're all different mm-hmm. in their thing that you can't paint them. With a so when you, don't, when you deal with a small, when you don't deal with the people, it's easy to paint them all with a brush and, and mm-hmm. push and dismiss them. But when I do, I'm going to see them every single day, mm-hmm. right? You don't do that anymore. And that's what's happening now with Muslims. It's probably very hard for anyone in, in England except for 
trying to be a right winger to make a broad statement about Muslims because everybody will deal with many types of Muslims, practicing and not practicing Muslims. Mm, and that's where you get to be. It's huh? far more comfortable than other places in Europe. Oh, yeah, far I more went comfortable. To Italy, yeah. uh, France, and there were people playing on the bench doing a shara, and I said, there's a, there's a park there, why don't you just get your yeah. masala, why don't you just pray? Yeah. And he said he, he, he felt you know, that they discriminate again and he was working, a yeah. migrant worker. And he was just praying with, you know, using his head and ishara and that's oh, it. Oh, uh, subhanAllah. On the bench, like subhanallah. Sat, still like a statue. And, and in England, we would just, we would just get them, we'd just... People looking at you. Yeah. They're, they're really against it, huh? Yeah, it's more, uh, it's more uncomfortable in Spain than it is in the US. I mean, I went to the it's mosque. It's worse. The they're, mosque. They're, they're, think about it, they have a history. In Cordoba right. and, and Granada, when we got tickets to go into the mosque, uh, they said they knew because they, and they, they yeah. knew we were Muslim, and they're just like this: this no mosque, no pray in yeah. broken English, no yeah. pray here because they know people. Did, but I think Sidi yeah. did the azan there. Yep. So I saw a video of that, <laughs> and he didn't get stopped. <laughs> no, they're totally. Uh, they're totally. Um, they have that. They're they're continuing that history, and it's revived recently. Yeah. Their history of hatred. The Spain or the. From the original crusaders yeah. The French and the Spanish are the original crusaders So we shouldn't expect any love from them But Spain I think Just the population Both of them have the population But Spain they're, They haven't been as aggressive as the French right? you, get, you get the feeling That in the air Is a coming serious conflict in France mm. Because the numbers are just tilting Too much yeah. and, and the Muslims there They got the toughest ones They got the Algerians Right, yeah, and <laughs> Palestinians are tough. <laughs> you haven't seen Algerians; like they're equally tough as Palestinians. Yeah. If they had Egyptians, for example, you would have any problems, right? <laughs> they they will they will melt into the population. All right, show me one place where Egyptians went and caused trouble. Right, they don't cause trouble. E e Egypt, <laughs> Egypt is the biggest place they cause trouble, and when Caesar came. They made him Caesar before he came. Before he even landed in Egypt, they had crowned him as Caesar. Like anyone who comes to conquer, they don't put up a fight to, of conquerors, let alone be a minority and put up a fight. But the French, they're tested. They got the Algerians, they got the West Africans. So, but I feel bad for them because after all that happened and that rioting and all that, it's all going to come back against them. Now the French are going to crack down way harder now than ever before. So we haven't seen that yet. But there's going to come some issue, and they're going to crack down way harder. All right, so. Mini Star says there's subtle racism towards hijabis in the UK, but it's not often. Yep, I'm sure that it's going to, it'll always be, but it's just something that they would have to hide it. Even the, the people who want to do, have that racism against them, or this discrimination, they would have to hide it. I mean, I had a friend who's in a yeah, chartered accountant, and they went for like a you know like a meal, like a work meal, mm -hmm. like a social kind of thing. Yeah, and he he had some juice or something. He said it tasted horrible. Yeah, and he found out that one of his coworkers had put alcohol in it. Oh, and really? It and he was so wow. disgusted. He told the manager and yeah. straight away got fired. The the person fired. Him wow, him for spiking the Muslim yeah, drink. Yeah. Wow, no reference, crazy. nothing. That's it. Dismissed. Couldn't Dismissed. Subhanallah. That's, that's crazy. So they really, you know, in the professional world, yeah. You Discriminate. They're know, not going to tolerate it. No. Not going to tolerate it. And that's why, I, I, as I said, that it's not um, a justification or a support of some of these Muslim presidents and MPs and whatever they are, prime ministers or whatever. But there is, Allah does have a wisdom in everything that he does. And Allah does not have to obey the Sharia when he spreads the truth. Okay? Allah can spread the truth how he wants. There are people on the fringes of, uh, of, of, of the society when it comes to interaction with Muslims. But when they look up and they say, hold on, the president of the country is a Pakistani Muslim. And he doesn't know what a difference between a liberal and a not liberal is. He just sees a Pakistani Muslim as president. Uh, the head of London, or the mayor of London, is a Pakistani with a Muslim name. Right? Those people on the outs on the edges, they get affected by that. They realize, okay, these people are here. They're in our country, right? They're they're part of our country, whether we like it or not. So Allah does have a wisdom in all these things. 
And that may be one of the wisdoms is that you get people who are so far from dealing with Muslims that are living in these little hamlet towns. But when they see the president of the country is a Muslim, it's going to affect them. It's going to make them realize, all right, they're here. They're probably here to stay. Okay.